All right, I have a letter here. A young man, uh, June 24th, 2017. Um, he sent me this a, as a private message and I saw it. And I was like, oh man, I'd really like to get around to answering those questions. And then he sent it to me through the mail to our ministry post office. And I thought, okay, that gets my attention. You know, um, I mean, please again, understand, please don't feel hurt or anything if I can't get back to you. If you write a comment or if you write a private message or whatever, even if you write letters, it's very difficult dealing with thousands of people as just one person. It's extremely difficult for me, especially with all else that goes on um, in my life. Um, but he says here, uh, I don't I don't know if I'm going to read your name or not. Um, dear Brian, my name is... Uh, I am from Central PA where you, from where you grew up. You can use this private message on YouTube with my permission. How are you and your family doing plus your ministry? Uh, pretty good. Uh, you, because of the Lord's work, have been a blessing in my life. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, you were the primary person God used to say that the King James Bible is the Word of God for the English-speaking people and to help argue the rapture doctrine better. I don't agree with everything with you, otherwise I would be lying to you. I am happy to say that I agree on all major Bible doctrine issues. I pray for you, your ministry, and for your family's success. I have a lot of questions for you, and if the Lord leads you to do a, or if the Lord leads you to a video about these topics, feel free to do so. Here we are. <laughs> How many King James Bibles do you have at this time? I know that your Cambridge is your main Bible, right there. Um, how many others do you have, including plain text and study KJV Bibles? Do you read your other KG, King James Bibles? Could you maybe please do a review on two KJV study Bibles? One is called the Ryrie Study Bible, and I have this one called the Life Application Study Bible. I think the notes are neutral of the text, but describes what is going on in the passages of Scripture. Um, I don't know if I have a Ryrie Study Bible. I think I have one of the um, Life Application Study Bibles. People send me these things and ask me, you know, could you do studies on this? Uh, how many King James Bibles do I have? Oh, brother. Um, uh, a few. You know, yes, we have quite a few King James Bibles. Um, I have everything from plain text, uh, you know, um, these little cheap ones that I was giving away for years and years and years from local church Bible publishers. They're like a vinyl cover. Uh... I've got quite a few of those that I still give them away to people. I have old ones, like ones that people have sent me. There's an old one right there. It's got like the kind of the, the larger cover to it and things. Kind of a neat older one. Um, I have Cambridge Bibles. I have local church ones. I have Oxford ones. I have old ones, new ones, all kinds of different study Bibles. Um, I have no way of knowing how many. Uh, unless I count them, which there'd be no point in that because I'm giving them away a lot of times. So i um, not really sure. As far as doing a study on the Ryrie Study Bible um, and the Life Application Study Bible, uh, I think I might have a Ryrie Bible. I know I for sure I have the Life Application Study Bible. So maybe at some point in time in the future I'll do that. I do know that Ryrie was actually on the uh, translation team for the New International Version. Uh, so I... I'm probably going to be, you know, I, I would not recommend Ryrie. Um, I think, is that the one? No, that's not the one. It's, I have it here someplace, the, the NIV, the making of a contemporary translation, it's called. And they list and they actually show all the different men. And Ryrie um, was one of them. So Ryrie was involved with the NIV. That should tell you enough right there. Um, and you'll see in, in his footnotes a lot of times, in his study notes, he'll attack the text of the King James Bible. So I would not recommend Ryrie. Life Application Study Bible, I haven't looked at it enough to really say one way or the other. Um, so, question about the rapture, and that is, how do you answer someone that does not believe in a rapture or believes a mid-tribulation, even though most of your argu arguments you mentioned are pre versus post? Um, how do you deal with these people? Well... That depends on how how far into this whole teaching they are. I'll be real sensitive with somebody that just has some legitimate concerns or questions, or but how would you answer this or how would you answer that? But when I'm dealing with a full-on 
sold out heretic that just hates the pre-trib rapture and they will no more be admonished. They won't listen to you. Um, I'm going to I'll be a little bit more rough with them. And I basically just go to the thing of I'd say, okay, you believe that Christians, the body of Christ is going to be there to see the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. Okay. What happens if a Christian takes the mark? You know, use that argument. Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11. Um, anybody that takes the mark goes to hell. But over in Ephesians chapter 1, it says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. So if you take the mark as a Christian, do you lose the seal? Does God lie to you? You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, but if you take the mark, God has to damn you to hell. How's that work? And they say, well, no true Christian could take the mark. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take it because you're truly saved. Well, then that's a problem with 1 Timothy chapter 5, where Paul says, you know, if any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So we're supposed to provide for our own. See, then you get them, well, you should grow your own food. How's that going to work when, you know, all the green grass is burned up and a third of the trees is burned up in just one judgment? People don't think. I mean, there's arguments that you can go back and forth on and stuff. But honestly, uh, I, I would practice the, the standard of Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. It talks about a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Okay? You get a post a postie uh, or a mid-trib, you know, whatever they call themselves. Um, I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time on them, honestly. Okay, continuing here. It says, second series of questions are about church buildings and home churches. Question for you, brethren. If you had a choice between a conservative church building or a liberal house church, what would you choose and why? Neither. Okay. <laughs> I would not choose either. Um, I don't go to some kind of a building or we don't have a home fellowship right now simply because of our living conditions and everything else. Again, I'll talk more about that because he gets into that uh, in a little bit here. I'll tell about you know what's going on. But um, this thing of, okay, you know, conservative house, uh, church building or liberal house church, which would be better? Well, first of all, I wouldn't go near a liberal house church, kind of a modern charismatic type of a deal, uh, if that's how you're defining liberal house church. If you're defining liberal house church as in a bunch of believers getting together to study the Word of God and go out and spread the gospel, and they're not dressing in suit and ties, well, that's not liberal. Okay, that's scriptural. All right, the suit and tie thing, again, your conservative church buildings, they're adding a whole bunch of traditions of men and they're elevating this stuff above scripture. Um, again, I've been through it. I've gone through the, the whole conservative church building thing, the suit and tie, the whole deal, and uh, I've been there and done that. So nobody's going to tell me, oh, you, don't know, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I know very much what I'm talking about on this issue. Um, and again, to, re to just restate my purpose and my my. I shouldn't say purpose, but my point about church buildings. Why am I against church buildings? Well, uh, they're not authorized in Scripture, number one. And you say, well, there's a lot of stuff that we do that's not authorized specifically sp spelled out in Scripture. Yes, I know that. But you see, the church building brings you into a bondage of a man-made tradition system, very strong bondage, where all of a sudden you are living two different lives, the one in church and the one outside of church. That's a big problem. And you'll have people going to these buildings that live two totally different ways. And it comes up with the mindset, well, I wouldn't do that in church. Well, I hate to tell you, you read the Bible, you're in church all the time. Church is another name for the called out assembly, the body of Christ. So see, it's a, it's a man-made tradition. It comes from Roman Catholicism. Again, proven fact of history. The Roman Catholics took Greek pagan temples and made them into their official temples of worship. You know, the line going down from Babylon in the book of Daniel, you know, and it goes Greek. The fourth kingdom is Greek. The fifth, or excuse me, fourth kingdom is, third kingdom is Greek. Fourth kingdom is Roman. Fifth kingdom is the one that we're in now, the iron and miry clay, part iron, part clay. Okay. I don't believe the fifth kingdom is coming. I believe it's been in since, you know, about the fourth century or so. But my point is, the church building thing, it sets up this weird system where you have people thinking, I'm in church, I'm out of church, when you're in the building. And there's all the traditions, the Sunday best and the 
all this stuff that goes along with it. That's why I reject it. Um, continuing here, he says, I am assuming the conservative church due to doctrine. No. Correct me if I'm wrong of what you said about church buildings. Oh, you did. Or I did. You said according to Scripture that, those, that there are no churches in the Bible. No, I said that there are no church buildings in the Bible. Let me ask you this. What about the churches of Corinth, Ephesus, Colossae, seven churches in Revelation, and others that are mentioned in the King James Bible? Okay. Um, yeah. Church is a, is, a, is a name for the, the body of Christ, but also small groups of believers. Uh, the church that's at Ephesus, the church at whatever. Um, yeah, it's saved people meeting together. You know, and you can meet anywhere. Okay, but the problem is, you know, they say, well, then you can meet in a church building. Okay, but then you're going back under that pagan Catholic system of thinking where you got to wear your Sunday best and you come, you know, prescribed times in the week and stuff and, and you live a certain way when you're in church and dress a certain way and act a certain way when you're in church. And then you live differently when you're outside of it. It creates that two-part system like that. That's why I have a problem with it. Continuing, he says, Your house church studies and FAQs were great. I still go to a building and I am not against either or with the exception of no matter if it is house or church building has bad doctrine. My question is about house churches and that if a house church would get large and a second leader of the flock is chosen. My question would be the people are, that are just attending how would they be split up then? Do you still have a house? Okay, well, let me, I'll just do this quick here. Um, how would they be split up? Okay, you get a house church group. Um, first of all, I've not seen too many that get that big, honestly. Um, most house churches I've ever been a part of or known about, it stays fairly small. And especially nowadays, okay, you're not going to have a whole lot of people getting saved and just massive revival. I mean, did Noah get a lot of people saved? No. Well, as in the days of Noah, so too shall be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. All right. Um, it's not going to be really that many real, true, genuine converts. Okay, but let's just say that there are. All right. What's the point of Christians coming together? To fellowship? Well, that's partly there, but it's not a social club. We're supposed to be here as ministers of reconciliation to go out and spread the gospel. So when you meet together with other Christians, you're meeting together, coming together and saying, Hey, brother so-and-so, do you have some King James Bibles? Because my neighbor really needs one and we don't have any right now. Do you have some? Oh, yeah, sure. I can get, they're, they're out in the car. I can go get one. Hey, that'd be great. Um, hey, sister, are, would you be able to do some artwork for us? We'd like to be able to get some artwork done for the cover of our tracks that we're putting. Yeah, I can do that. Hey, could you? Could we do this? Could we do that? Hey, what do you guys think about going down to the whatever and let's do some tracting? Let's you know try some street preaching or let's let's do whatever. That's the purpose for the body of Christ. So, if you have that group get so big that now all of a sudden you say, you know what, we can't fit everybody together here. Well, the brethren that are from that part of the west side of the town will say, and the brethren that are from the east side of the town, you say, well, hey, let's split up. You guys from the west side of the town, or west part of the whatever, or whatever direction, you know what I'm saying. You go over that way, you do some work over that way, we're going to go over this way. And we're going to set brother so-and-so, or brothers, you, you, and you, over that group. And these three brothers over here, or however many, you know, there are supposed to be a plurality of elders, not just one man pastor, that's another thing. Spread them out and then teach and then spread them out and then teach and then spread them out. That's the way it goes out. Continuing here, he says, Do you still have a house church group at your home in Maine? No, we do not. How long have you done Bible Believers Fellowship in PA for? Okay, Bible Believers Fellowship in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania lasted for a few years, um, and it basically, you know, we dissolved it essentially because yeah, well, I shouldn't say we dissolved it because uh, Brother Jesse Delusky and his wife and things, they kind of continued it in their own way. But um, the calling that the Lord has placed upon my life and then consequently my wife as well, now our son, is to be in video ministry. Um, we have met with people in the area here, uh, new converts or people that, that uh, have questions and things like that. They can We can freely talk about things. But as far as a weekly every week meeting type of a thing no we don't do that um we are sort of uh 
um, I don't know what you'd even call it. It's, you know, I mean, I understand video ministry is not something spelled out directly in the Bible, but we're publishing the Word, okay? Um, there's a great, great need for people, people to be taught the Word of God, and it just, it's an all-consuming thing. I mean, there's, there's just, we barely have any time uh, for anything. I mean, we have to force ourselves to take time off from the ministry. I mean, as I speak right now, it's, it is 3.12 in the afternoon, uh, Wednesday afternoon, whatever day of June this is, <laughs> 28th or something, I don't know, but whatever. Um, and I mean, I'm doing these videos. I've done uh, three, other, three other videos so far. This is my fourth video I've been, I'm doing. Uh, my son's going to be up here probably any minute, and uh, he's downstairs taking a nap. My wife's over in her office over across this way. And she's uh, she's finishing up some research work and things of hers, and and uh, just you know tomorrow we have an appointment. We're going to be going to look at a place and and possibility you know home that we could get. Um, it's just busy, busy, busy every day, every day. So to have a weekly meeting, it just isn't going to work right now. So that's my answer to that. We're not against house churches. We're not you know trying to shirk our duties of being around other Christians. We're here online. Okay, and we deal with people in the local area as well when the Lord opens that opportunity. Okay, uh, and if you say, well, how can you be rebuked and how can people get in contact with you and stuff? You understand? Continuing with his letter here. What do you think of these YouTube channels that I am to talk about? Jesse Morell is from Open Air Outreach, preaching at college campuses and other places against sin. But he does not believe in once saved, always saved. And he said that he is an open theist. What is that? He thinks that everything else that is wrong is Calvinist in teaching. I could be wrong about him, but because I don't know everything. Um, I've heard of this guy, this Jesse Morrell guy. Street preachers, um, there are some that are decent. But uh, street preaching, you're dealing with people's flesh like all the time. And you're just having people screaming and yelling profanity at you and everything else. And there's that fine line to draw between, you know, preaching the word and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men. You know, Second Timothy chapter 2. There's that fine line to draw. Um, I think street preaching is fine. I've done it myself a few times. Uh, again, the Lord's called me into this ministry, a preaching, teaching ministry. Um, but I'd be very careful about some of these guys because, again, they're dealing with a lot of these street preachers are dealing with people who are professing Christians and yet that are clearly wicked. And so they're saying, well, you've, you know, they'll get into the thing of, a lot of times they'll get into the thing of so-and-so, you know, you're, oh, you say you're a Christian, well, you've lost your salvation because you're doing this wicked stuff and whatever else. They'll get away from eternal security. There are those Christians that stick by proper biblical doctrine, but street preaching, if you're doing that all the time, especially nowadays, I don't know. It's kind of rough. Open theist, I'd have to look that up. Honestly, I can't just give you a, a, um, a definition for that off the top of my head. I, I'm sorry about that. I'd, I'd have to look that up. Uh, but continuing with the letter here, um, Paul Kidd, Doc Kids, also believes not, or also does not believe in once saved, always saved, even for sinning, which also Jesse Morrell believes. Yeah, I've heard of this Doc Kids guy. I don't know much about him. So many people and I've dealt with over the years and people, hey, don't, you should warn about so-and-so and he's saying this and he's saying that and I might have even made a mention. I don't know. But uh, if they don't believe in, in eternal security, um, I'd be real careful. Um, Patrick the Baptist does not believe in praying a prayer to get saved. He, on the other hand, still does still not believe once saved, always saved for a different reason, not for sinning. Number one, for not working and providing for the family, and also Revelation 22. Patrick the Baptist is a wingnut. I mean, I dealt with that guy years ago. He's crazy. Uh, I wouldn't waste any time at all on that guy. Bible Flock Box is a Seventh-day Adventist who does not believe in Sunday worship and also does not uh, believe once saved, always saved. He also says that hell is not forever. Well, a lot of these people just scratch them, you know, don't even waste time on them. Finally, Candy at Eyes to Jesus. She believes in a mid-tribulation rapture, and she said that the pre-tribulation rapture came from the Catholics. I don't believe her at all. Well, good for you. It proves that you have sense, brother. Um, 
this whole thing that the rapture came from the Catholics, they say that, uh, um, you know, that it's a Jesuit futurism, Jesuit futurism, you know. Then Ribeiro was the one that created the rapture, the pre trib rapture. Then it went to Darby, and then it, it's a Jesuit conspiracy. Um, the rapture, for the Catholics to create the rapture, uh, the rapture theory, we'll say it that way, would be about the dumbest thing that they could do because the pre-trib rapture theory totally demolishes Roman Catholic teaching and doctrine. I'll give you a couple examples. If the church, the faithful church, is called up to be with the Lord, that destroys Catholic doctrine. Why? Because Catholic doctrine is the gates of hell would never prevail against Christ's church, so Christ's church always has to have a physical presence on the earth. I mean, if pre-trib rapture is true and all Catholics leave, Who's going to run the Vatican? The Pope and all the faithful Catholics are whoosh, up. You know, and when's the last time you heard the Pope? I mean, if the Jesuits are behind the rapture teaching, well, Francis is a Jesuit. All right. Uh, when's the last time he spoke about the rapture? Tell, you know, all the Catholics out there, you better get out there and start witnessing the people because we don't have much time left. You know, it's ridiculous. Another thing, uh, why you can easily prove that the, the rapture teaching, the pre-trib rapture teaching, was never founded by Roman Catholics. Okay, another thing is, if there is a pre-trib rapture, the Bible teaches that the saints, and the pre-trib rapture theory teaches that the saints go immediately to be with the Lord. What do you do about purgatory? You know? So, and I can, I've showed many times in the catechism that they teach that there's going to be a final, final time of purification time of tribulation for Christ's church. The Catholics have never believed in a pre-trib rapture. Uh, not going to happen. So to say the, the Jesuits came up with this thing, and, and or you know the other things they'll say, the Jesuits came up with it to make Christians weak. How does the pre-trib rapture make Christians weak? It makes us not worldly. You know, we don't turn our eyes away from Jesus Christ and look at the things of the earth and say, we got to start prepping, we got to do this, we got to go and, and, you know, get into government things and, and try to stop the government, you know, stop the new world order. You know, we look at that stuff, we go, yeah, stuff's going to happen. That's what the Bible says. I know I'm going to be leaving before that stuff happens. So the more of that new world order stuff I see coming, the more fervent I'm going to be to witness to the lost. Because I realize I don't have much time left. Why would the Jesuits want to create a system that makes Bible-believing Christians more fervent? Okay. Uh, next question. Question about your YouTube channels. What are the main differences and purposes between your main channel, Husky 394 XP, versus King James Video Ministries, versus Husky 394 XP, all capital letters, versus KJ Video Ministries? Um... I think that there's only three. I don't know. There, there might be a fourth. I'm not sure. But uh, one of them is a mirrored channel that somebody else runs, and they just put my videos into playlists because I'm not real good at that, getting that stuff done. Um, just too much else to do right now. Husky 394 XP um, is an acronym for a chainsaw, professional logging chainsaw. It originally started out, I was posting videos of logging and fishing. Uh, I was going to have another channel completely for the ministry thing. And then I just like, oh, maybe I'll just put a couple videos on. And it turned out Husky 394 XP became the main ministry channel. So it's a Husqvarna 394 XP. You know, the XP is a professional designation. I know it's weird, but uh, that's kind of me. But uh, King James Video Ministries is the other channel that, you know, somebody else has created and things. Um, the Husky 394 XP, and I'm not sure what the capital one is. I think that there's... The way it is, is KJ Video Ministries is also all capital letters Husky 394 XP. Um, basically, what happened there was I had this channel here, and um, Stephen Shutt, the son-in-law of Gail Ripplinger, um, she contacted me and said, we'd like to have a YouTube channel, and Stephen wants to be the one that does this channel and stuff. So how do you do this? How do you make a, a channel? So I created you know, the KJ Video Ministries uh, channel um, page there. I created it and then videotaped how I created it so that he could see how to go in and make their own channel. So I think that their channel is AV Publications. Um, they didn't put up too many videos. He just had a couple of videos he posted and then I guess 
you know, they didn't continue it for whatever reason. That's fine. So I had this secondary channel just kind of there, and it was just kind of dead for a long time. And then I got a strike on my main channel here because of the Satanists at Tomorrowland uh, that I rebuked that whole thing. It's an Antichrist festival. And um, they I was only allowed to upload 15-minute videos. So then I switched for a while over to KJ Video Ministries, and I was posting my videos over there. Um, and then when my time expired where I could go back to making full videos on this main, <coughs> excuse me, this main channel, um, I came back here. So that's why I have two different channels. Uh, continue here. Next, a question about eternal security. Have found more evidence of scripture about the areas that you were unsure of. I don't remember from the top of my head of what you said about each of them. Uh, Romans chapter 11, Revelation chapter 22. Uh, there's arguments back and forth, and I'm just, I'm saying, you know, I do believe in eternal security. I preach eternal security. Firmly, I am definitely once saved, always saved, you know. But I look and I see some of the questions there in Romans chapter 11, and it's, they say, well, it's national privileges that are cut off, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, and it's just, it's just a, it was meant to be kind of a, a point of conversation. I probably should have worded things a little bit differently when I was did this study back years ago when I was actually right in this very room, right in this very spot, just didn't have the bookshelf behind me. But I probably should have worded things a little bit differently. Uh, I apologize for that, but you know, I'm not denying eternal security. I'm just saying that there are two portions of scripture. One says that you can be cut off if you go against the nation of Israel. The other one says that if you take away or add to the book you know, the, the Bible, um, you know, this book, it says, but I take that to be the whole Bible, that your part is taken out of the book of life. And people can say, well, it's because it was never in. Well, it doesn't make sense to say that. How could your name be taken out of the book of life if it was never in the book of life? And they say, okay, but that's for a different dispensation. Well, you can make that argument, you know, but then I can argue the counter thing and say, yeah, but all through Scripture, there's warnings about changing the Word of God. Uh, God's never been okay with that. So, I don't know. I'm not going to... The whole thing is, what a lot of the uh, Baptists will do, they, they try to teach eternal security throughout the whole Bible. Um, they'll get their little doctrines and they say, it's always been by faith alone. It's always eternal security. It's always this. It's always that. And then they have to pervert the Scriptures to try and match their doctrine. I don't do that. If I hit something that I don't understand, I'm going to be very honest and say, I don't know. Here's what I'm going to present. You can argue with the point back and forth. If I get, you know, attacked because I'm honest, well, <laughs> okay. Uh, continuing here. Next, just a general question, and that is when you decide to do to a topic or a study of some sort from God's Word, what do you pray for, and is it also based on interest, and how does the Lord put it in your heart, especially since you are in full-time ministry? That can come in a variety of ways. Many times I have requests from people like you. I get a letter, get an email, get a whatever. Can you please do a study on this? Or can you please do a study on that? Um, there's other times that something will come up and I'll do a study on this. Some kind of a prophecy update or some kind of a thing. And somebody will raise a question or somebody will say something You know that I have to go back and say, Hey, you know what? That's a good point. I better check this or that or whatever else. Other times I hear of somebody going through a situation or somebody... Whatever, there's a variety, a large variety of ways that the Lord can inspire me to do a sermon. And I had somebody, you know, post a comment I saw and they said, why don't you ever pray at the beginning of your videos? Well, I do. It's just off camera. I, I, before I get the cameras going and everything, or camera and recorder, voice recorder, before I do that, I usually just, you know, pray and, I, and ask the Lord, please speak through me and, and help me to say things correctly, help me not to mess up and, you know, Whatever. Mess up doctrine. You know, because I mess up plenty of times with my speech. But um, that's that's basically the basics of it, you know, as, as far as uh, how do I come to these different sermon ideas and things. Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, there's, I don't see any right now, right around here, but I have, I have lists of, um, well, I'll just show this real quick. I'm not going to show the thing in detail, but right there. Uh, this is 
my wife has topics that she wants to research and, and you know, talk about in the future and things and stuff, you know, things that, that uh, she'd like to do, you know, studies for women and stuff. And, and um, you know, just we both are like always writing down ideas, you know. It just comes to us and it's just like, oh, we, we, you know what, we should do a study on that. Do we have a study on that? You know, so, but uh, let's finish up here. He says, my final question for now is based on these comforting sermons. One of them was titled Hope for a Christian. Another one was called Maintaining Your Blessed Hope, The Beginning of Sorrows. My question is that they sound similar, but they are different. How are they different and yet similar meaning? Sorry, this is long and disclaimer, I have not watched every video. Shame on you. I mean, you should be watching 1,200 videos. You should get that done in a day. All right. I usually watch what is interesting based on topic. Hope you can answer these questions, hopefully, in a video or many, maybe multi multiple videos. Hopefully, if at least private message on here, if it's the Lord's will. God bless you all indeed, and keep going strong for the Lord. In Christ's love, brother's name. Thank you very much for your letter. Very good questions. Um, how are these sermons uh, sound similar, but they are different? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, there's... A lot of things overlap in the Bible, but you, what, you'll, what you're going to understand when you start to really study the Bible is that you might see one passage and you go, wow, it, it really means this. And then instruction in righteousness comes along. You take it for doctrine, first of all, then instruction in righteousness, and you go, wow, it's also good for that. And it's also, also good for reproof. It's also good for correction. There's, there will be multiple meetings within passages of Scripture. And... You know, it's it's the Bible is such a fascinating book. It is so deep and profound, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that do line up. Um, and you can go back to the Old Testament a lot of times. I mean, the other video I did here just a little bit ago on Psalm 35. I mean, <clears throat> it's absolutely phenomenal the the tie-ins to a Christian today and and what all of us are going through. Uh, instruction and in righteousness, doctrine. You have to be careful going back to the Old Testament. Instruction in righteousness, you'll find beautiful things. Um, there are a lot of studies about sanctification and the comfort and of the catching away of the body of Christ, but then there's also ones about doctrine. There's ones of reproof where I'm, I'm you know, going over the arguments against the pre-trib rapture. There's ones of correction where I'm judging people because they don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. You're going to have that different, there's different aspects of Scripture uh, like I said, the Bible is a very deep book. So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, some of you out there, if you've had similar, some of the sim, similar questions there, I hope that I've answered your questions as well. Um, please do not um, hesitate to contact me with questions. Be patient. It doesn't always happen right away. Um, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just really had a just a little bit of a time here to get some videos done. I've been doing video for about two hours now, so uh, big uh, plans for tomorrow and things and stuff and for the rest of the day, actually, so really got to get going here. Um, got to do editing work and stuff now, too, so fun, 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 <clears throat> but uh, just please do keep us in your prayers. Um, we do pray for um, all of you, our viewers, uh, some of you specifically, you know, that you let us know specific prayer requests and things. Uh, we like to hear from people. Uh, try to help as many people as I can. It's not always easy, but uh, that is going to be it. <sighs> going to be I'm working on the study notes for Revelation 17. In case you're wondering if you've been following the Revelation studies, uh, definitely working on that. Uh, very interesting things in Revelation 17 about uh, Mystery Babylon. Um, <clears throat> and so working on that, working on a couple other things as well, doing some research and also juggling the thing of trying to find a place to move to and, you know, getting things ready for sale. And it's a lot. So um, I guess that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and we will definitely see you in the next video.